I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. This message is to all Muslims, and all who reject the precious saving blood of Jesus, who need to be born again. The Quran says, all Muslims shall definitely end to hell, with no guarantee of coming out. Zura 19. 71 and 72. This verse must be incredibly disturbing to Muslims, who can only look forward to go to hell when they die. Do not be deceived by Muhammad and his false god. Whatever goes to hell, stays, in hell. One day I would expect the Muslims to wake up and realize, the God of Islam is no match, for the God of Israel. On November 23rd, 1998, I had an experience that truly changed my life. Now it doesn't matter if you believe my experience, what matters is that you check out what the Word of God has to say about hell, and avoid it just the same. This was not a near-death experience, this was actually an out-of-body experience that would be classified as a vision in the Bible. In 2 Corinthians 12, 2, Paul, when he was caught up into heaven in a vision, he said whether in the body or out of the body, he didn't know. Well, the Lord showed me that I left my body. Now, my wife and I had attended a prayer meeting every Sunday night. We came home from this prayer meeting, went to bed like any other normal night. Now, I had never studied the topic of hell at this point. I have never gone to dark movies. I've never drank, I've never taken drugs, and I never had a vision before. And I got up at three o'clock in the morning just to get a glass of water, and suddenly I was pulled out of my body, like being drawn up out of your body, and I found myself falling through the air down this long tunnel, and it was getting hotter and hotter. And then I landed on a stone floor in an actual prison cell in hell. Rough-hewn stone walls, bars, filthy, stinking, dirty prison cell, but like a dungeon. And I wondered, how did I get here? Why am I here? I was fully awake and cognizant. I looked up and I saw these two enormous beasts in the cell, these demons, reptilish in appearance, bumps and scales all over the one's body, huge jaw, sunken in eyes, claws about a foot long, and they were pacing in this cell like a vicious, caged animal, and they had the most ferocious demeanor about them. They had an extreme hatred for God. They were blaspheming and cursing God, and then they had this hatred they directed towards me. The one picked me up, threw me into the wall of this prison cell. I hit the wall. I felt like bones had broken. Even though a spirit doesn't have bones, it felt that way. I collapsed on the floor, and I wondered how could it be alive through this? The other demon picked me up, dug his claws in my chest, and just tore the flesh open. I couldn't believe I was surviving this. How could I be alive through this? I noticed I had a body. Remember Luke 16, he wanted a drop of water to cool his tongue. He had a mouth to speak and so forth. But this body withstands the torments. And I noticed though, there was no blood or water coming from the wounds. But Leviticus 17, 11 says, the life of the flesh is in the blood. Well, there's no life in hell, so there's no blood. And there's not one drop of water in hell. And these demons have no mercy over you whatsoever. They have an extreme hatred for you. Now about this time it went dark. I believed it was God's presence there to illuminate it so I could see. But then he withdrew his light and it resumed its normal state of absolute pitch black darkness. I mean, you could not see the hand in front of your face. While I was taken out of this prison cell, I was placed over next to this large raging pit of fire that was actually about a mile across with flames raging high up in this open cavern. And this is where I could first see people. There were thousands of people inside this pit screaming and burning. It was so horrendous to see a person on fire. They just looked like skeletons. And the screams were so loud and deafening. You want to get away from the screams, but you can't. Now, I understood I was down deep in the earth. I descended to get there. I ascended when I left. And I understood there were different levels of torment and degrees of punishment, but there is no tolerable, comfortable level in hell. Any area is far worse than you can imagine. I wanted to talk to a person, but you're kept isolated and alone for all eternity. You never, ever get to be with people. For all eternity, you're kept by yourself. You know, I thought about my wife up on the earth, and I understood I'll never get to say goodbye to her. You don't realize how tormenting of a thought that is. You know, I'll never get to be with my wife, enjoy her, hold her, and uh, to not have any finality with your loved ones is extremely tormenting that for all eternity, she'll never know that I still exist, that I'm down deep in the earth. 
You know, death does not mean cease to exist. Death means separation from God. You still exist. And I just missed her so much, I wanted to be with her so much. And the stench in hell is so foul and putrid, the worst, like the worst open sewer you can ever imagine. And the demons themselves have a disgusting foul odor to them and the smell of burning sulfur. So you have to fight for even the tiniest bit of oxygen. You're, you don't ever get to go to sleep. You're completely exhausted and you never, ever get to go to sleep. You're hungry, you never get to eat. You're thirsty. Remember the rich man in Luke 16 wanted one drop of water to cool his tongue. Well, you never get that drop of water. The fear level that you experience in hell is so far beyond anything you can imagine. And I know something about fear. I was attacked by a 10-foot tiger shark pulled down under the water. Well, that fear that I felt at that moment paled in comparison to what you feel in hell. I saw maggots crawling all over everything and snakes, demons that were only two and three feet tall, uh, some were larger, twisted, deformed, grotesque. When I was looking at all this horror, something began lifting me up this dark tunnel. And then suddenly this bright light appeared. I knew immediately who it was. And I just called out his name. I said, Jesus. He said, I am. When he said that, I went out. I passed out and I don't know if I died, but he touched me when I came to, it was at his feet that I realized that if he wouldn't have gone to the cross, I would be in that place for all eternity. Man, I was so grateful for the cross. I just want to thank him over and over and over. I didn't want to ask him any questions, but thoughts started coming to my mind and he would answer my thoughts. And there was eight different things that he answered for me, but I'm just going to share two of them with you. One is I thought, Lord, why did you send me to this horrible place? He said, because many people do not believe hell is real. He said, even some of my own people do not believe hell exists. The second thing was uh, the hopelessness. You see, God blocked it from my mind that I was a Christian. He hid that fact from me. Many scriptures in the Bible that point that out, but he hid it from me for this reason. You see, if I was there as a Christian, which I was, but I didn't realize, I would have known, praise God, he's getting me out of here. But as an unsaved person, he wanted me to experience what they feel hopelessness and you don't know what it's like to be absolutely hopeless for all eternity you understand you're never ever going to get out of this place there's not going to be anybody come rescue you you'll never get out that's the worst part of hell understanding you're never going to get out you know the most important aspect of this vision that jesus shared with me was a piece of his heart he allowed me to feel a little bit of what he feels the anguish he feels for a soul going into hell, the great love he has for people. It was so overwhelming, I couldn't even bear to stand to feel even a piece of it. But Ephesians 3.19 said, his love passes knowledge. But the reason hell is so horrible is because it's a place absent from God's goodness and his attributes. You know, all good comes from God, James 1.17 states. And he withdrew his goodness because it was prepared for the devil and his angels, not for man. But if man rejects Jesus, there is no other place for him to go. Please hear me. You do not want to experience hell for even one minute, much less than an eternity. But one second after you die, it'll be too late. You will not get a second chance. Because God loves us, he gives us a free will to choose. Please investigate the scriptures for yourself so you can find the truth and avoid this place at all costs.